DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, Coast to Coast, present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Oh, brother, what I know about him. Oh, that's me. Hi, <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, this duck we have up yonder will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is war. Okay, duck. Au revoir. He's a French duck. <laughs> Mr. Fenneman, begin, huh? Oh, Groucho, we have a cab driver for you. He's Mr. Maury Simon. His partner is a special guest, one of the great track and field coaches of all time, Mr. Dean Cromwell. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, uh... Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Dean Cromwell, eh? Anybody who reads the sport pages know who you are, Mr. Cromwell. You're a fine-looking fellow, Dean. How old are you? Well, my friends have been telling me for the past 20 years that I am 55. Well, you don't look any older. <laughs> do you have any rules for keeping in such good condition? Yes, sir. Groucho, do not have any minor vices. Don't smoke, <laughs> nor drink, nor use uh, swear words. No profanity, Groucho, no profanity. Well, those are admirable qualities, Dean. I don't use profanity either, unless, of course, I have to give up smoking. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, who are you again? I'm Maury Simon, Mr. Marks. Maury Simon? That's oh, it. I see. Where are you from, uh, Maury? I was born behind a dairy that my dad owned in Cleveland, Ohio. Are you a baseball fan, Maury? Oh, I'm more than just a baseball fan. I used to work at the Cleveland Indian ballpark. I used to sell peanuts and popcorn and ice cream. Do you, you like to hear how I yelled? I used to vend. Used to, well, I'm not know. crazy about it, but I mean, if, you, <laughs> if it's an overwhelming desire you have, I tear loose. I hear the way you feel. Peanuts, popcorn, pack, jet, fried, eat in every pack. I mean, I used to have another one. No wonder they lost the wild series. <laughs> There's another one I used to have. I used to sell ice cream. Like that? I had to go. Yeah. Ice cream, you scream, you all scream for ice cream. Bigger telling honey coated ice cream here. Cooling and refreshing. Enjoy the game of ice cream. Was this was this written by Robert Browning? <laughs> Do people holler like that around the way you uh, work, uh, Dean? No, no, Dean, they're I very think? very quiet because my sport is individual sport. I see. Well, let's get back. You've been track coach at uh, USC for thirty years, haven't you? Forty years, uh, Groucho. Oh, well, my watch has stopped. I don't know. <laughs> Does a track coach give the boys a pep talk like they do in football in order to uh, steam them up to win? Uh, I always did, Groucho. Yes, I told each one of those boys that he was a champion. I called him champ. Told him that he was going to be better uh, tomorrow than he is today. That next year he's going to be better than this year. Continually keep that word champion in front of him. Well, did you tell them this collectively? Individually. And in the meantime, you keep them relaxed. Well, how do you do that? Do you, uh, oh, hit talk, them with a baseball bat or something? Uh, talk to them gently. Oftentimes, you can tell them a, a short story. Mm -hmm. Funny story? You know, it would better be funny if you're going to keep them relaxed. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us one of these funny stories? Uh -oh. If the audience goes to sleep, we'll let Maury sell some more peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, two old gentlemen in... Uh, bar sitting at a table in New York City. Uh, one gentleman says, I am uh, 85 years old and I've never used glasses. The old other one said, why? And he says, I drink my liquor from a bottle. <laughs> That's 
have to paint that thing once more, yeah. huh? Yeah. He not only sells them, he steams them. Eh? And the other old gentleman says... Oh, this is... Oh. The other old gentleman says... Oh, I'm sorry, Dean. Yeah. I thought that was all there was to it. Oh, this is... Uh, we're still going with the second one. Oh, I see. The other one says, I'm 86 and I have you beaten. I am 86 years old and I've never done a day's work in my life. But they got even with him. He died shortly after. They cremated him, put his ashes in an hourglass... And he's been working ever since. <laughs> you told this joke right before a track meet? <laughs> well, that joke would make anyone run fast. Yeah. <laughs> including the person who told it. <laughs> Dean, who are some of the famous... I like that joke. Thank you, Joe. Thank it's you. not funny, but it's sincere. <laughs> well, Dean, who are some of the famous athletes you've helped to develop over the years? Uh, three of the greatest sprinters the world has ever seen, uh, Groucho. Uh, Charles W. Paddock, the first of the fastest humans, and then Frank Wyckoff, the next of the fastest humans that defeated every sprinter in the world, and then lastly, Melvin Patton, who now holds the world's record in the 100 yards and the 220 yards. And then, of course, the heavenly twins, Earl Meadows and Bill Sefton, that broke the world's record in the pole vault on an afternoon, about two minutes apart. Well, you've got quite a record. You were the coach of the United States Olympic team, weren't you, a few yes, years Yes, sir. Back? I was in London in 1948, and assistant coach in Amsterdam in 28, Los Angeles 32, Berlin in 36. Well, that's, that's quite a record, huh? continue this battle, but the time has come for both of you to win some money here. I know that Dean is interested in that. Uh, uh, how about you, Murray? You uh, like money? Oh, I love it. Uh, well, we're going to start you off with $100. You have to try to add to that by answering four questions. If you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll. Are you ready? I'm ready to Okay, you. you select a... <laughs> you select a general information quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? Ten, I'd twenty, fifty, eighty, hundred. Fifty dollars? That's fine. Okay. Fifty dollars. One answer between you. What famous American do you associate with Poor Richard's Almanac? <coughs> Talk Benjamin, it over. Benjamin Franklin. Yes. Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Ben Franklin is right. You now have one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, now what are you gonna go for? Sixty? Okay. Sixty? By what means of transportation did the crew of the Contiki arrive at their destination? It had a raft. It was a raft. George Raft is right. <laughs> you now have two hundred ten dollars. Yeah, you're getting a free ride here, Dean. Yeah. Huh? I'll try seventy or whatever you say. Whatever 70. you say. Is that all right? Okay. Seventy? What instrument is used to determine the altitude of an airplane? Altimeter? That's a uh, close one. Yeah. You now have $280. Well, you're climbing. Is your last chance to be the other couples? Let's what are you going to go for? Let's and make it uh, 40 $40. 40 How many fiddlers did old King Cole have? Old King Cole was mayor, told it, mayor, you told it to you. Fiddlers three. Well, fiddlers three. You are absolutely right. Three fiddlers is right. <laughs> wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck Thank from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. George, let's take a break for a minute. I want to see that beautiful car again, and you know the car I mean. I certainly do. So let's go out to the Chelsea Proving Grounds and see the magnificent new 1955 DeSoto. Well, here we are, and there's the car. The key word this year, Groucho, is style. Sleek, taut, modern style. This new DeSoto is mighty fast-looking, eager and new and different. Designers talk about its taut, surging feel and look of power. Well, to you and me, it just looks like it wants to get out and travel. This is the smartest DeSoto we have ever built. Longer, lower, and comfortably wider. Added inches give the car a long, slim, modern style that's new and different on the American scene. Take a look at the new, smooth slope of the low hood. The big, graceful new grille. 
headlights, bumpers. Perfect examples of modern smart style. Huge glass areas, front and rear. Of course, this year again, DeSoto offers you your choice of all full power assist features. And hang on. This year, for the first time, DeSoto offers you two great V8 models. The mighty Fire Dome V8, now raised to a full 185 horsepower and at a completely new low price. And the super-powered Fire Flight V8, 200 horsepower worth of flashing automobiles. Fire Dome or Fire Flight, DeSoto's really got it this year. See the 1955 DeSoto tomorrow at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Mrs. Norma Ireland and Mrs. Uh, Mr. Thomas Craddock have some things to discuss with you, Groucho, right now. And here they are. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Norma Ireland and Tom Craddock. Mrs. Ireland, where are you from? Wadsworth, Ohio. Wadsworth? I thought you'd be from Ireland, huh? Well, uh, could you give us some idea of your age? Well, 40-ish. 40-ish? Well, that's a nice age. <laughs> it's a nice age. You're young enough to have a future and old enough to have a past. <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do? I assume you're married. Yes, he is an industrial engineer for uh, California Institute of Technology, a Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Well, that's a very imposing uh, list of titles. And let's see now, you're Thomas Craddock. Uh, yes. That's you, huh? Thomas Craddock. Where yes. were you born, Tom? Mystic, Georgia. Mystic? Why did they name a town Mystic? Sir, it's a mystery to me. I don't know. <laughs> well, where is Mystic exactly? Oh, it's near Tifton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that clears that up, all right. Now, where is Tifton? Near Mystic? Oh, it's about 30 miles from Valdosta. Are we getting near anything yet? Well, you're about uh, 60 miles from Jacksonville. Jacksonville, huh? Yes. Now, now you're talking. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida, huh? Yes, sir. Are you married, Tom? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is she a mystic girl? Most girls are, you know. No, sir. She's a Tifton. A Tifton, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> what kind of work have you been doing since you left Mystic? <clears throat> oh, I've been farming, a little bit of everything, and... Worked for Fred Rice Rug Service. Oh. Must be cleaning up, huh? Yes, sir. It's Do you have any nice. other job besides the rugs? Oh, I sell jewelry on the side. Hmm. Which side do you sell it on? <laughs> well, it's pretty... On business. the outside? Yes, sir. It's... Well, how is the jewelry uh, rack, uh, business? <laughs> well, it's pretty bad right now. Why is that? It's close to Christmas. There ought to be a lot of... Well, I've sold uh, three watches and one ring... Since, uh, since when? Oh, God, it's been a while. My wife, my wife bought the watch and... What's this? My wife bought one of the watches. Your and, wife bought the watch? And I bought the ring, but I... <laughs> but I still owe the man. I've been on him for two months. The ring. Tom, I think if you work real hard inside of six months, you could build your jewelry business into a shoestring. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Uh, Ireland, uh, are you a housewife? Yes, I am. Do you do anything special for relaxation? Any hobbies? Well, I'm an amateur contestant. You mean you've been on a lot of shows? Uh... No, not uh, not shows. I enter um, other kinds of contests. What, puzzle, what kind? Huh? Puzzle contests and limericks and statements and jingles. And... Have you ever won any of these contests? Well, I've won over 100 prizes, I think, that, which isn't... Uh, a large number at all. Well, uh, you must be pretty smart. How much money no. have you won? Um, Approximately. Between three and four thousand. Oh. What are some of the prizes you've won? You probably have 300 electric toasters at home. Right? No, I'm not that good. Uh, you have 200? <laughs> would, you, would you be interested in buying a watch here from <laughs> Well, you're a nice young couple, and I wish both of you lots of luck. Norma, you ought to be a whiz at the quiz here. I'm a little scared of you. Oh, no. No, don't, don't give me such a disadvantage. I'm... <laughs> oh. Well, remember, we start you off with $100, and if you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll, no matter what it amounts to at the time. Are you ready? In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $320, and the secret word is wall. 
Okay. Okay, here we go. You select a dictionary quiz. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. <clears throat> Talk it over, and what do you want to start with? What do you want to start with? One hundred? One hundred dollars. You're going to start with a hundred dollars? Yes, sir. Okay, what is a leotard? L-E-O-T-A-R-D. Come on, a slow son. person or individual? No, it's a it's a form-fitting garment worn by ballet dancers. Well, you lost half your original hundred. You now have fifty dollars. Well, don't get discouraged. What are you going to go for now? None. Ninety. Okay. What is a lexicon? L-E-X-I-C-O-N. Dictionary. Dictionary. Dictionary is right. Dictionary. Is right. <laughs> We now have one hundred forty dollars. Now what? <clears throat> Eighty. What do you call the blanket or shawl worn over the shoulder by some of the people of Mexico? Time's up. Mandela. Mandela. Mantel. No, it's a serape. Well, you lost half the 140, you now have $70. All right, it's your last chance to be the up couples. What are you going to go for? 70. 70? Many universities have a campanile. C A M P A N I L E. What is a campanile? Is it a tower? Clock tower? Well, that's close enough. It's a bell tower or a steeple, but we give you a. And you wind up with $140. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. You took a tough category. Doctor, we invited a married couple to come to our show tonight. And, Always married couple. And if Reverend and Mrs. Carl Doss will come in, I'm sure you'll discover some... Uh, Pretty unusual topics of conversation. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word. <laughs> Say the secret word and take home an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see around the house. Reverend and Mrs. Carl Dawes, eh? I don't think we've ever had a minister on the show before. Not really a coward, but I just may let you do all the talking here tonight. <laughs> Where are you from, Reverend? Is that what I should call you? Reverend? Call me Carl. Carl, huh? I was born Carl in Long Beach. Yeah. No, just leave the Reverend off. Okay. I was born in Long Beach, grew up in Southern California. Oh. And Mrs. Dodd, what is your first name? Helen. Helen, well, that's good. Where's your church here, Carl? Well, at the present time, I'm not serving a church. I'm lecturing and preaching on invitation in churches throughout Southern California. Oh. You're sort of a guest conductor, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been married, Helen? 17 years. Do you have any children? Yes, I do. Boys or girls? I've got some of both. <laughs> How, old are, How old are these children? Well, uh, Richard and Dorothy and Donald are 12, and uh, Teddy and Laura and Susan and Elaine are 9, and Wait Diane minute, and you... Rita are 8. You had triplets and then you had quadruplets? Well, <laughs> they... Reverend, I admit you've got were... some pretty important contacts, but uh, <laughs> this is pretty hard to believe. Is this true, Helen? It, it wasn't as incredulous as it sounds because, well, I, like the triplets, they, they weren't really exactly triplets. Well, they're the same age, but um, one boy is uh, married. Well, he looks like my husband, and another you boy is bald? part Indian. <laughs> he was when he, when he was born. No. And uh, another boy's part Indian, and the other one of the of the three is uh, uh, Brazilian and Portuguese and English. And our baby is uh, only 100% American. He's Blackfoot Indian, and then some are Japanese. And well, it's pretty clear the whole thing. <laughs> but listen, before 50,000 pediatricians go out of their minds, you'd better explain this, Carl. What it's is very, it? It's very simple. We adopted me, 12 either. children. <laughs> You've adopted 12 We've children, adopted and they're 12. all of different races and nationalities? <laughs> and they're all of different races and nationalities? Yes. 
I'm speechless with admiration. I think you should uh, get the handshake, really. Huh? <laughs> you have to do taking care of them, eh? Well, do the ra racial differences uh, present any problems, Helen? Well, the children don't really realize... Uh, well, they know it theoretically they're different, but it doesn't make any difference. For instance, the, the, the two oldest boys uh, always play cowboy and Indian, but the, the blonde, blue-eyed boy always plays the Indian, and the, co uh, the, the Indian always plays the cowboy. And, uh, when, when they must have fun chasing each other, huh? <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I'm sure there must be a story behind these youngsters, Carl. Could you tell us how all this happened? Well, when we were married, we wanted a uh, normal family, as any couple does. And when our doctor told us we couldn't have children of our own, we thought naively, well, we'll adopt them. And then we discovered that uh, for every normal, blue-eyed, blonde-haired youngster, there were a dozen or more couples waiting for that child but that the mixed-race children were classified unadoptable because neither race wanted them. So we started taking mixed-race children. Helen, I realize running your household must be a full-time job, but do you ever get a chance to relax? Do you have any hobbies like gardening? Or... I do gardening. Uh, really, my main hobby now, outside of taking care of the children, is uh, writing. I... Uh just finished writing a book about my family. It's called The Family Nobody Wanted. McCall had a, uh, a small part of it in their September and October issues. And when I'll is this book it. coming out? It's came. I mean, it's come. I mean, it's, come. <laughs> it's the past tense of come. <laughs> well, uh, is it on sale now in the bookstore? Uh -huh. it's, it's been on since September 22nd. It's well, all you people could do her a big favor by going out and buy one of these copies. Yeah, it makes Published a good Christmas a little present. Brownie. Yes, <laughs> it makes a wonderful Christmas present, and it's a, a fine plea for tolerance. Thank you. Well, and thank you. <laughs> Gosh, we're polite around here. <laughs> Reverend Doss, you have a wonderful family. Now, I want to ask you one question. With the experience you've had so far, would you do the same thing all over again? We sure would, Groucho. It's been uh, an enriching experience for us. We've discovered, for one thing, that all races are basically alike. That these differences that we uh, call racial differences that divide men are cultural differences. They're something that's acquired after birth. That's true. That all people are born alike. That's true. All people are born alike except Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> They're as far apart as the two poles. <laughs> well, I think you've done something for your country that uh, is rarely equaled. You've uh, had a small League of Nations all of your own. And uh, it's too bad that more people don't do this. You know, we send a care package away for $10 or something to Korea or something. We think we've done a wonderful job. Now, someday in the far, far distant future, Reverend, and you too, Helen, when you're both face-to-face -face with St. Peter, you can certainly tell him that Groucho sent you. <laughs> Well, it's time to win a lot of money, and I think everybody in our audience, all 50 million of them, uh, they're all pulling for you, and that probably even includes the other contestants here tonight. All right, this is a, a dictionary quiz. In the race for the $1,000, Dean Cromwell and his partner are still leading with $320. Well, all right, what do you want to start with? $50, 60 80 100 10 easy ones. 100. Let's live dangerously. <laughs> all right, what do you call the front or face of a building? Elevation. Front elevation. No, it's called a facade. F A C A D E. Oh. <laughs> you lost okay. half your hundred dollars, you now have fifty dollars. Oh, come on now, enough of this nonsense. What are you going to go for now? Ninety. Ninety? What is the word for a remedy given to counteract the effects of a poison? Antidote. Antidote is right. <laughs> <laughs> you now have one hundred forty dollars. All right, now what are you going to go for? Eighty. Eighty? What do you call the sheath in which the blade of a dagger is enclosed? Scabbard. Scabbard is right. You now have two hundred twenty dollars. Seventy. You've had uh, eighty, ninety, and a hundred. Now you're going for seventy. What do you call seventy? What do you call the strips of wood that make up the sides of a barrel? Staves. Staves is right. <laughs> wind up with 
Yeah. I'm a little crooked tonight, but I couldn't help it. Thanks and good luck, Mr. Soto. Well, you did pretty good. That means that Mr. Dean Cromwell and Mr. Simon with $320. In just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Come inside the most luxurious, stylish interiors in an automobile today. Inside the sparkling new 1955 DeSoto. Here's beauty and comfort at the height of fashion. DeSoto this year makes use of glamorous nylon, glistening metallic thread fibers, the softest shoemaker's leathers, Weaves and patterns that spell style and luxury. Smooth, gleaming chrome sets off the interiors. Interiors, incidentally, available in over two dozen color combinations. Here's the ultra-smart double cockpit effect of the brand new DeSoto instrument panel. In a class by itself for beauty. And set right on the instrument panel, the new flight control lever. Yes, inside or out, the new 1955 DeSoto will catch your eye with its up-to-the-second style and beauty. See it at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers now. DeSoto, styled for tomorrow. And here's the winning couple, Dean pardon Cromwell. Me, pardon me, George. Before you go ahead, we have something a little unusual here. During the commercial, we've been having a conference backstage about the quiz we just finished. We asked a question for which the correct answer is facade, F-A-C-A-D-E. Now, Mrs. Dawes said front elevation, and some of us feel that might be acceptable. So we think the best thing to do is to bring them back next week for a chance at an extra $1,000 question. But uh, Dean Cromwell and his partner uh, are still high for tonight and still get a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question tonight. Right. All right, gentlemen, come on in. <laughs> well, uh, Dean, we're through with the sprints now. We're up to the mile run here. Here it is. Most of the major countries of the world have well-known news services, like the Associated Press, United Press, and International News in this country. For $1,000, what is the famous news agency of England? Talking over. I think so. What is it? Right. Right. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Reuters. Reuters is absolutely right. <laughs> they win $1,000 plus how much in the quiz, George? $320. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Friends? Go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. Arthritis and Rheumatism Foundation needs your help to stop the crippling effects of arthritis. Send your contribution to Arthritis, care of your local postmaster. 